previously on Retro Game and Toy Hunt. But this guy is actually selling reproductions. He doesn't have it marked anywhere. There's no signage saying that he's selling actual reproductions. But obviously, if you take a moment to look at these, especially the Game Boy games, some of these games don't even exist. All right, everybody, welcome back to yet another Retro Game and Toy Hunt. And today we're starting off at Emporium 31, which is a big ass flea market down in Greenwood, Indiana. And right off the bat, yep, we've got a bunch of fake games. Just like that previous booth in the last video, we've got a case filled with fake Game Boy and Nintendo 64 games, probably from the same guy. And just like the other one, there's no actual signage or anything saying that these are reproductions or anything like that. So I can only assume that this is just a shitty reseller trying to make a quick buck off unsuspecting people. And that sucks. And down here on the floor, we've got a squishy brain. And I have really no clue what this is, but anytime I see weird anatomy-based science toys, I instantly gravitate towards it. I was always like that, you know, even as a kid, I loved those see-through model kits and stuff like that. And even weird shit like this. First, you put monster flesh on their creepy little bones. Then pour flesh remover into the monster lab and bubble off their slab. Too yucky. So yeah, of course, I totally think this is awesome. And if I was a kid, I've been begging for some money to buy this thing. And out of the corner of my eye over here, we've got a box full of Xena. That's right, all the Xena that your VCR can handle for 20 bucks. I mean, VHS is coming back, so you better get your Xena while you can. And speaking of VHS tapes, we've got the making of Michael Jackson's Thriller just sitting over here. This is awesome. I actually remember watching this on MTV back in the day. That should tell you exactly how old I am. And of course, it wouldn't be a flea market unless you saw a booth filled with the absolute crappiest weapons you've ever seen. And I mean, I get that these are supposed to be decorative, but honestly, people, really, are you decorating your house with this stuff? Because if you are, I, I, got, I got some questions for you. I mean, some of this shit is just so goddamn ridiculous. Look at these fucking claws. Look at them. All right, we've got one more booth here, and then maybe we can escape this flea market hell. This guy, he's got a variety of stuff, and it really doesn't seem like he focuses on any one thing. Maybe like Pokemon cards, because he definitely has a nice collection of those. But otherwise, he's just, you know, got some stuff like these Star Wars figures, these god-awful little mini figures that I can't fucking stand because they're so expensive. But yeah, over here is probably his most prized possession, which is this case of po old Pokemon cards. Now, I don't really know anything about Pokemon cards. I was never into that stuff as a kid, but you know, maybe this stuff gets you going. It really doesn't for me. And over here in the do not touch section, we got a bunch of old wrestling figures, a GI Joe and a Trivial Pursuit Star Wars game for some reason. I'm not sure why he doesn't want you to touch them because they're not really worth anything. And then over here, we've got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in plastic baggies. And you guys know how much I love my plastic baggies, especially if they got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in them. And this guy had some interesting <laughs> turtles in some of these. Some you don't actually see. Like, a, you know, of course, you got the naked Leo, but, you know, this astronaut Raph back here is pretty cool. They'll see him every day. But down there below it, so this really caught my eye. This is like a crate full of old Kmart baseball cards. And they're all brand new. Like, how do you find these? Where do you get these from? It's just, it's the mysteries of the flea market. But yeah, that's going to do it for this flea market. Again, this is Emporium 31. That's down in Greenwood, Indiana. Huge, just an absolutely massive flea market. They gutted out an entire strip mall. It would take like all day to go through this thing and actually, you know, look through it and not just find stupid shit like we do. But yeah, it's a pretty cool place if you want to waste half of a day, so check it out. Oh, where's it at? Where's it at? I need it. Where are you at? Yeah. Man, if you guys don't know what Chivito is, I highly suggest you find a local gas station and search for it. They're usually in the back on like some pegs, but it's basically Mexican candy that's covered in whatever spices they can throw at it. And it, some of it's a complete nightmare, but some of it's actually really good. It's just the luck of the draw. So it's whatever you get and you never know. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> it went down my throat. <laughs> 
All right, quick test to see if you guys have been paying attention to these videos. What do you think this place is gonna be like? If you answered this, then you know your flea markets. And I, I have no excuse for this place. Sometimes my curiosity gets the best of me and we end up in places like this. Places where you probably shouldn't actually be because I mean, look at this, just look at it. My God. I mean, I guess if you want some baby clothes, they got you covered over here. We got some onesies, got some shirts. And oh my God, what the hell is even happening in here? And I am not gonna touch those bottoms. But yeah, the real highlight to this place was this cool ass flea market cat. I think he just wandered in off the street or something. I don't even think he knows where he is. Yeah, you're a good flea market kitty. It don't matter though, he's fine. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this place. I apologize, we're gonna get out of here. I mean, this place is literally the gates to hell. So, I let's, let's just get out of here and act like this never actually happened. So to make up for essentially this entire video, we're gonna stop over here at the toy drop and we haven't been here in probably well over a year. It was actually one of the very first places that we went to to do these videos, which my god, it has been over a year since we started that stuff. I think, yeah, like two years at this point. Good god. But yeah, this place is still just as cool as ever. I mean, mainly, they got a lot of Star Wars stuff. And if you like Star Wars, this is your place. But they do have a really cool selection of a lot of other stuff. But yeah, this is like the Star Wars section over here. And yeah, a lot of, a lot of retro Star Wars stuff. Again, I've never been the biggest Star Wars toy fan, let's say. I like Star Wars in general, but as a kid, I, I had a few here and there because they were cheap and my grandparents would buy them for me, but otherwise I would buy things like He-Man and Transformers if we really had some money that day. But yeah, a lot of this stuff was stuff that I never even really looked at when I was a kid, so... But it's it's still neat, you know, as a fan of Star Wars, seeing like the, you know, the blaster here and just below that we got some old Halloween masks. Like, that stuff's cool as hell. I did want to show this real quick over here. He's got a glass case display down here that he's got made up with a bunch of figures and everything. But the main attraction is this giant Jabba's barge back here. And this is the HasLab crowdfunded barge. If you've never seen it, it is something. You know, even as a non-Star Wars toys fan, it's, it's pretty goddamn cool. And I love displays like this. And he's got the sand and everything in there. It's so cool. And over here we've got a nice glass case of turtles. Actually, I got some video of the glass case just to the right, which had a lot of uh, retro turtle vehicles, which I hadn't seen a lot of them since I was a kid, so that was pretty cool to see. But of course, the video is corrupted, and I can't really get back over there to do it again, but whatever, you guys don't give a shit. But yeah, there was some pretty cool stuff here, including this mech raft, which I don't even remember seeing as a kid, and this very problematic Leonardo. Down here in this case, they've got a nice collection of mask figures and vehicles. And I think I've explained it in previous videos, but I don't think I really actually went on about just how much I love masks. Like this was, besides He-Man and Transformers as a kid, like mask was it for me. Like it was the thing that I wanted most of. I love toy cars. I love putting dudes in toy cars and I loved anything that transformed, and that is, it's literally what Mask is. Essentially, vehicles that would transform into other vehicles or things, and I, I got a pretty big collection of this stuff somewhere, and at some point, 10 years after I'm dead, somebody's gonna find them and have a fortune sitting there in front of them. But like, man, the snake oil thing, I got that somewhere. God damn it, I need to find it. Back here in this case, we've actually got a cool little collection of Ghostbuster toys that you generally don't see too often. I mean, they got a couple of the, the normal ones that you kind of see way back in the back, and plus the ones where you, you know, pull their arm and their eyes shoot out and stuff. Those were the most popular ones, but like these here, I, I don't know their exact names. Like, you never saw those, so that's, that's pretty cool to see right here. And of course, down here, we've got the Ecto-2 and the Ghost Popper. I really wanted that Ghost Popper as a kid. I think it was really neat. And to close things out over here, we've got a few gadgets, including a light bright. Did you guys ever have a light bright? 
I had a light bright. Like one of the original ones. You had to put like the dark paper up on it so you knew where to put the, the clear pegs in. Yeah, that, I, again, this ages me horribly, but I had a light bright. But yeah, I think that's going to actually do it for us here at the Toy Drop. If you are in Indianapolis, I highly suggest tech checking out the Toy Drop. They've got so much stuff here. It's all very well organized. It's not your uncle's dank-ass basement filled with toys and, and wet cardboard boxes. It's a cool-ass store, so definitely check it out if you're in the neighborhood. And that's gonna do it for us today, because we're gonna go over to this weird carnival and find some elephant ears to shove down our throats. But thanks for watching the video this time, guys, and we will be back hopefully soon with yet another retro game and toy hunt.